Moab Rocks, stage one, Porcupine Rim, here's my cheat sheet. I am getting ready to leave for Moab Rocks, one of my favorite season openers. And I think this will be the fifth year, maybe just the fourth year. No, the fourth year that I've done Moab Rocks. Um, and I, I love this race and I thought I would share with folks who've never done this race a little bit about each stage. So today I'm going to talk about stage one and that's the Porcupine Rim stage. Um, this day starts off usually pretty chilly and getting into the start grid starts happening really early. Um, if you're like me and you really like to warm up and maximize that for race day, it's a little challenging on this day because you really need to be in that start grid like 20 minutes early. So your warm up, you're going to lose a lot of it. It's okay. Just know that's what's going to happen. If you are lucky enough, which I never am, to have people around supporting you, um, wear a down coat to hang out in that start grid. It gets pretty chilly and then hand that off to somebody. Um, maybe I'll find somebody to help me out this year. Um, whatever. So start goes off. Um, it's a neutral through town through a few corners on some pavement. Um, but the pace ramps up really fast. And if you are one of the super fast guys and you're going to be challenging to be one of the first people on a single track, you definitely want to go with that group. But for everybody else, you've got a lot of time to sort things out before you get on single track. Um, I got to look up the mileage, um, but it's like, for me, I think it's like an hour 20 of riding before I turn onto the single track. I'll have to check that too. But anyways, you start off on pavement, it kicks up, it suddenly turns into gravel road. It's really nice that first little bit of the gravel road is actually not very steep, so you can kind of catch your breath after that initial really fast start, but everyone's going to be kind of getting sorted out. So if the pace is too high, don't be afraid to slow down. There's going to be lots of groups behind you. You're not going to end up isolated. You're going to find people to ride with going up um, the road to the top of Porcupine. So make good choices for you. Um, do know that there's like around mile nine, that gravel road does kind of flatten out a little bit enjoy that because it's going to kick back up and get steep. Um, some beautiful views though. Uh, the last little bit of that gravel road gets a little rough. It gets a lot more steep. So just know when it gets rough and steep, you're almost home. Well, almost to the single track. I call that home because it's the best part. So there'll be AIDS people up there. If you have some problems, you can sort it out. If people have support, oftentimes their support people meet them there to like ditch clothes, refresh water. I've never had any of that, but that's a great spot for folks and they're going to be there to help you out. Then you're going to turn on to Porcupine and the very first bit of Porcupine um, is a little bit more flat than the rest, but it's also, it's a little less mainstream single track and it's not complicated, but it is pretty wiggly and it's got just like a lot of weird kind of chunky, rocky features and it's your first day riding Moab. So just be kind of heads up that first mile on single track, really look through your lines. Um, it's just easy to get a front wheel caught in weird spots on that section. Then you really roll into some of like the classic porcupine rim trail, which is super fun. Um, there is one spot pretty early on that's like this little zigzag down the slick rock and it's pretty steep there. And if you have amazing trial skills and there's not a lineup of people struggling to get down it, you might be able to ride it. But for most of us mortals, this thing is not rideable or if it is rideable for you, it's something you're going to want a session many times to do. Um, don't risk a stupid wreck this early into your first day of a stage race. Just jump off your bike. Almost everybody's walking it. And honestly, you end up sitting on your butt and sliding down the last bit of that slick rock. It's actually kind of fun. It's like a little slide. But just expect... It's gonna be a Congo line. You're gonna get frustrated. Some jerk is definitely going to run around the like pack of 20 of you trying to go down and whatever, just let them be a jerk because that just happens. Brush it off, eat some snacks, slide on your butt down the last little shoot of that, hop on your bike and keep going. Um, 
there are lots of little drops um, all through uh, the porcupine rim and they're, I wouldn't say they're all rollable, but they're all, if you have a little bit of momentum, they're all rollable. Um, but when in doubt, treat it like a drop. Um, you know, nothing big. I don't think there's anything except for near the very end that even is a three foot drop. They're all pretty small, but just know they're coming. They all have good landings. Um, oftentimes there's like several different lines you could take to go off that feature. And I would just recommend if you haven't ridden porcupine before, just ride the route that looks the most obvious or the one that looks the most ridden because that trail gets so much action that the regular most obvious route is generally the most friendly. So when in doubt, be a little lemming, follow everybody else, but the good type of lemming, I guess. Um, when you get near the bottom part of Porcupine Rim, there are a section, you kind of get out on this plateau and there are a series of drops there. Um, they're all rideable, they're all very fun. I want to say the biggest one might be pushing four feet. Totally clean landings, very simple, straightforward. But if that is not in your wheelhouse, know that they're there and there are ride arounds for them. They're all a little bit off to the side. The main route is going down those drops. Um, there's probably going to be riders around you. Most riders do go around those drops, unless of course you're chasing somebody who's in baggies that expect they're gonna boost big. Um, but just know they're there. Again, all totally rideable. The only thing I don't like about them is the landing's kind of flat on all of them. And on a cross country bike, that's not my favorite, but they ride great, There's nothing complicated to them. Um, you're gonna pick your way down. The time part of the course stops on Porcupine Rim before you get to the last, I don't know, maybe two miles of it, which is really great because from that point on, it's kind of a little bit of route finding, there's some exposure. It's just not great terrain to be racing on. So go through the finish line, celebrate, hang out with your friends for a moment, but it's not a great place to hang out. There's not a lot of room there. Um, so I usually hang out for a minute, chit chat with the people I was riding around and then start my very conservative ride down to the, I guess you call it the end zone of the race where they're gonna have all the snacks and everything down by the river. Uh, this last section again, it's kind of root findy. Um, there's a few weird techie lines on it. Um, everything, there's a million lines. So it's just like, if you find yourself on something that you're like, oh, that's not for me, just look to the left or right and you'll find a different line around it. Um, but yeah, ride conservatively. I've watched people take some really nasty wrecks in this section because they're like showing off with their buds and they're all adrenaline hopped up from just finishing a killer stage race. Um, don't ruin your next two days showing off on this last little bit of untimed single track that doesn't matter. And near the very end, there's a section that almost everybody is going to walk. It kind of like does this zigzag through a canyon. Um, you won't accidentally come on anything on this whole trail. Like everything you can see it coming if it's something that you're like, I'm not sure if I want to ride that or not. No surprises, but just keep it in check. Uh, you'll get to the official finish where there's all the snacks and beverages. Enjoy your time there. Get all fueled up. Um, that's the place to hang out, take care of business. And then just know you've got probably like a 15 minute gentle spin back into town to get to the start where your vehicle is going to be. Um, so just prepare for that. I always grab a whole bunch of snacks at that finish area. I actually travel. I ride the whole race with a little Ziploc bag full of my protein drink. And I shove that in a bottle and drink that on my gentle spin back to town. There's great donuts on your way. So maybe you want to bring some cash to hit the donut store because it closes really early, like maybe like one o'clock. I don't know. It's like, I can't remember the name of it. It's like, it's got a rooster on the front of the building and it's on Main Street. Awesome donuts. Highly recommended. Anyways, that's kind of my notes for stage one. Um... Yeah, it's really a fun day. If you have the ability, if you get down to Moab a day early, I highly, highly, highly recommend shuttling Porcupine Rim. You don't wanna ride up that gravel road. There's, there's nothing to be gained by doing that except for getting yourself really tired. But using one of the shuttle companies, I'm always on Hazard County shuttles, they're great. Um, and they'll just take you up to the top 
And so you can take your time and pre-ride all the lines and know if you want to ride the drops or not. Um, yeah, just kind of getting some comfort on that trail is really nice because it's an amazingly fun descent, um, especially if it's not totally fresh and your first time running down it. So yeah, stage one, Moab Rocks. It's going to be awesome. I'll see you there.